Edith Smith was admitted to Lakeview Sanitarium on a warm June day in 1952. Edith was just 24 years old. Her husband had taken her to the sanitarium just four weeks after she'd given birth to their son, Samuel. Today, Edith would have been diagnosed with postpartum depression. In 1952, she was diagnosed as mentally incompetent and declared insane. Edith was quite lovely in her own way, not what some might call a beauty, but she had lovely chestnut hair, golden eyes, and a broad smile. Her laugh was contagious until her son was born. Edith had expected to feel joy and happiness. She expected to experience the greatest love of her life. Edith expected to hold her child, to look into their eyes, and to have a bond of love so pure and so deep that she would lay her life down for this new little person. Unfortunately, Edith did not feel any of those things. Her joy melted away as soon as she saw him, so tiny and helpless. Edith didn't know anything about raising a child, and now there was someone who depended on her just to survive. Her love scraped her heart like fingers on a chalkboard every time Samuel cried, and Samuel cried for hours and hours. Colic, the doctor said. It gets easier, her neighbor said, as they dropped off their jello salads and macaroni dishes. Edith didn't feel a bond with her son. In fact, Edith hated the sound of his voice, even his rare cooing sounds. She would stare into his eyes for hours, just hoping to get that spark of a bond, but... There was nothing. She hated that no one asked how she was, but rather how the child was and how her husband was, and she wanted to scream at them, This isn't what I wanted. Something is wrong. My husband won't help me. I cannot sleep. I cannot eat. I can't even bathe myself. I don't want to do this. One day... When Edith was in bed with the pillow over her head, while Samuel cried just a few feet away in his crib, her husband came into the room and he was furious that she was not taking care of the baby. Has he eaten? His diaper is filthy. His face is hot. His cheeks are red. How long has he been in here? He demanded to know. Edith replied, since you left for work this morning. It was 6.30 p.m. by then. Edith's husband called a doctor friend, and the next day he packed a bag with a nightgown, underwear, slippers, and a robe and took Edith to the sanitarium where she would live out the rest of her days. In the beginning, her husband would come to visit every Saturday and he'd bring Samuel with him, too. Edith was heavily sedated and was not allowed to hold the baby, and she was glad. Time went by slowly, and Edith's doctors told her husband that they feared that she would not recover. Her husband began coming every other weekend, and then, when Samuel was two years old, Edith began electroshock therapy and her husband started coming alone once per month and then the visits stopped her letters were returned Edith spent her days shuffling along the corridors her blue slippers had faded her nightgown in tatters but something began to change in the depths of Edith's mind after the electroshock therapy. She would see young men in her room, some pointing flashlights, some yelling, demanding 
for her to speak to them. She would scream out and tell them to go away. But what seemed like night after night, they'd come back. They were asking her her name. Edith, she yelled. She could hear the boys gasp and whisper and stare. Stare into the darkness as if they could not only see her, but knew she was there. And Edith knew that they were there. The doctors then began to medicate her even more. But the young men were there, taunting her, demanding that she move objects. Edith threw her bedpan, and it skidded across the floor, banging loudly against the cold cement wall. Edith did go insane, and in her final days, she writhed and screamed out about the people coming into her room. She begged for someone, anyone, to tell them to go away. Finally, on the day of Edith's passing, she was staring out into the vast emptiness, but she saw a boy, a young man, really, saw him so close she thought she could reach out and touch him. And as the nurse sat at her side, Edith did reach out, and the young man jumped and looked terrified. She looked into his eyes, and she felt something as her spirit left her body. Mark Kinsey, Dale Carnegie, and Sammy Miller were standing in what used to be the old Lakeview Sanitarium. They'd come on Halloween night and brought with them three flashlights, their iPhones for recording noises, and Mark had snuck a knife from his dad's drawer. They walked around looking at the old asylum and began to ask questions. Is anyone here? They went into several rooms before they finally came to room 187 and asked, Is anyone here? That's when they heard the voice, the weak scream of a woman yell, Get out! The boys jumped, checked their phones to make sure they were recording, gave themselves high fives and were outwardly acting excited, but inside the boys were terrified. They'd heard talk about being able to hear a spirit in here, but they figured that it was just rumors boasting, amping up the fear factor. What is your name? demanded Mark. Edith, came the voice, and Sammy's heart sank. Okay, this isn't funny, he growled. Stop it or I'm leaving, he demanded towards the other boys. They stared in confusion. You know that my grandmother, my dad's mom, was in here, right? The boys, still staring, fear in their eyes. Finally, Mark asked, Well, what was her name? Edith, yelled the voice again. And a bedpan slid across the floor and landed at Sammy's feet. Just then he saw it, the figure of a woman. She was reaching out. Her hair was matted, her arms bone thin, and they seemed to, I mean, he felt like they, they made eye contact. He felt something before the form drifted away.